sending out memos to top corporate leaders, telling them not to worry, and that it was just campaign rhetoric. We had Obama saying, you know, I'm against free trade. I don't like NAFTA and all those free trade sellouts. We had Austin Goolsby going to the Canadian diplomats and saying, don't, don't mind him. He's just popping off. That's just election era rhetoric. Doesn't mean anything. Presidential candidate Barack Obama was publicly criticizing the North American Free Trade Agreement in a bid for votes, but privately telling Canadian officials not to worry about it. He said that he was going to bring us peace in the Middle East. He said that he was going to bring us transparency and a balanced economy. He said that he was going to not have, have lobbyists. He said he was going to clean up government. He said he was going to work for the environment. And point by point by point, within the first month of his inauguration, he has lied and deceived and cheat it, the American people. The people of the United States and the world were filled with hope that Obama was the real deal when in his first week in office he signed an executive order supposedly closing Guantanamo Bay and other secret prisons. Then the press actually had a chance to read the executive order and were shocked to find that the executive order only said that Obama was thinking about closing Guantanamo in a year. But worst of all, the executive order continued the practice of rendition, which the L.A. Times called secret abductions. They don't know. They think that he signed off immediately on closing Guantanamo, but he's allowing prisoners now to be taken to foreign countries and not knowing where they're sending them and to be tortured in foreign countries. They don't know that they kept that provision in there. Obama is now continuing the practice of secret arrest, secret prisons, and most importantly, indefinite detention without trial. When a British high court said that it was preparing to release secret British and U.S. torture orders that prove that the Bush administration was ordering personnel to systematically abuse detainees, Barack Obama threatened to cut off all U.S. intelligence ties to England. To add insult to injury, he stated that the program was important to national security, not only endorsing Bush's crimes, but continuing them. Obama voted for a reinstatement of the Patriot Act. And by his early deeds already again, as we saw with his, uh, his, the issues of retention, he's willing to send people that have been charged with nothing to be tortured to so-called get the truth out of them. If the makers of this film attempted to cover all of Obama's lies, this documentary would never be released because there are new ones every day. So in the interest of time, we're going to cover one more big one. Barack and his handlers made the cornerstone of his campaign, keeping lobbyists and donors out of his administration. Within hours of being elected, Obama did a 180 and filled the White House and federal government with lobbyists and donors at all levels. Obama picked William Lynn, the top lobbyist for Raytheon, to fill the number two position at the Department of Defense. Timothy Geithner former president of the private Federal Reserve Bank of New York, was picked by Obama to be Secretary of the Treasury. Geithner promptly crammed the Treasury Department full of lobbyists, like his chief of staff, Mark Patterson, formerly the top lobbyist at Goldman Sachs. Obama appointed top lobbyist to the Saudi royal family, George Mitchell, as the lead Middle Eastern envoy. Obama appointed the king of Wall Street lobbyists, Leon Panetta, to head up the CIA. Obama tapped Tom Daschle, top lobbyist for health care firms, to run the Department of Health and Human Services, and the list goes on and on. Then, three weeks into his administration, Obama launched a new lie, more outrageous than the previous. With Academy Award-level conviction, he said that he was upset about the banker bailout, which his own chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, another former Wall Street executive, had engineered. Obama said that he had signed an executive order capping the CEO's salaries of those who had taken the bailout money. There was just two problems. All the major banks and brokerage firms were exempt, and the new order only dealt with any future bailouts.
and those were to be on the honor system. What gets people upset, and rightfully so, are executives being rewarded for failure. AIG, Bank of America, and Citigroup, which have received billions in bailout money, don't fall under this plan. Only banks negotiating future agreements with the government will be restricted. But this appears to be built on an honor system, and White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs had a hard time explaining how enforcement would work. Well, let, let, let me get, uh, I, I will get uh, clarification from Treasury on that. Generally speaking, this is already the biggest liar and the biggest disappointment that we've seen in recent history. And again, qualitatively beyond the rather low standards set by Bush the Elder and Clinton in terms of delivering on, on promises. Bottom line, Obama is a fantastic actor and an even better liar. His track record is clear. He has done the opposite of everything he told the people he would do. They'll make up one lie after another. And if you believe these people, knock yourself out. I don't believe a word they say. Within one month of the passage of the first banker bailout bill, the press reported that over $5 trillion had just disappeared out of the U.S. Treasury. By December, the amount of money that had been stolen had reached $8.5 trillion. The leadership of both political parties circled the wagons and would not discuss where the money had gone. Informed Americans protested the private Federal Reserve System at all 38 of their regional governorship offices. Arrest Bernanke and Paulson! Arrest all the criminals that stole the Baker bailout money! It was refreshing to see people standing up against the real power structure, not being distracted by the elite's front men like George W. Bush and Barack Obama. We traveled to Dallas, Texas to cover We the People taking on the real enemy. Hey, I want to talk to the workers up there on the parapet. The ones smoking cigarettes and just jump back. You're, you're with the American people, we know that. But understand, as the workers inside, you're not in a federal government building. You're in a private federal reserve that uses that name as a fraud. That'd be like if my first name was Federal Reserve Jones. I'm still not the federal government. I'm not a federal agency. But if I said my name was Federal Reserve, I could go out and pay off politicians and get them to allow me to get into power so I could issue the currency and credit, and then I could buy up the world. That's what these criminals have done. A lot of people think that the Federal Reserve is already part of the government. They're not. It's controlled by cliques of unelected, unaccountable bankers meeting in secret. Most of these people have never even been through the formality of a Senate hearing or a Senate confirmation. They claim that they're part of the U.S. Uh, government. They masquerade as if they were part of the U.S. government. But in reality, this is a purely private operation. Jackals, hyenas, raptors, all of them loyal, not to the American people, but to the Wall Street banks, which is where most of them come from. Everyone is pointing to Barack right now, President Obama, as saying, you got to get the economy together. you got to get the economy together. When, in fact, the president has very little to do with the economy. It's the Federal Reserve Chairman that at least sets the policy. That's a privately owned company, the Federal Reserve Bank. They set the agenda. These guys are masquerading as a federal institution. They are a private banking consortium, and this is their front, their holding company. The Federal Reserve is not federal. It's a front for a private banking cartel that's on record in congressional testimony, and they're the ones orchestrating the economic collapse we're seeing right now, so that's why we're here. While at the In the Fed rally outside the Federal Reserve Bank in Dallas, Texas, we spoke with Ron Paul's brother, Wayne Paul. 1913. The Federal Reserve Act was passed for the House where three members of Congress were on the floor. At that time, they only needed a majority of votes to pass it. So in 1913, the Federal Reserve Act was passed. Twenty years later, 1933, under Roosevelt, the United States was declared bankrupt. And in 1933,